Hello everybody, Gliderman here. So today we're back with the networking, and now we're going to be working on making uh, it multi-threaded. And this will allow it to, uh, you know, be able to handle multiple connections, and also be able, in, at least in the client, to be able to receive data uh, while it's coming in, and while you're also typing. So, uh, let's get started. We're first going to start off with the server. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to break it into two different classes. We're going to have one that just works on accepting connections and then one that will handle incoming connections from everything else. And uh, basically we're going to have this server class point and just create new connections basically. We'll just call them server connections. And then uh, that server connection will just have a quick reference back to the server. That way uh, when it wants to send an incoming message out to all of the different uh, clients, it will be able to access a list in the server and then dump that out. So let's get started. We're going to click on this package over here uh, in the server project, and then we're going to click uh, this icon up here to create a new class. And we're just going to call it server connection, like that. And it should load up here. Okay. We're just going to drag this over so that it's on the side there so that we can easily view both of them at once. Um, this, uh, because we're going to need this to be multi-threaded, we're going to make it a thread. So we're going to do extends thread like that. And then uh, we're going to work on the constructor now. So we're going to do public uh, server connection. That's going to take a socket, um, we'll call that socket, socket, and it's also going to take a server, and uh, it's going to just be called server. The reason it's going to have the server passed in there uh, is so that it has the reference to all the stuff in here. So uh, now it looks like we need to import socket, so let's click on this, and then it's going to say, hey, import socket. So now uh, we're going to call the superclass method in thread uh, just so that it can properly uh, get registered and set up. So we're going to do super and then here we can pass in a name for this thread and we're going to just call it uh, server connection thread. That way I can keep track of what it is. Now up here uh, we're going to have the socket and uh, we'll just go with the naming convention of socket here. A little bit of a better naming than what we've got over here. Uh, so socket called socket. And then under here, we're going to do this dot socket because that's uh, how you refer to this global variable. And then we're going to assign it to this local variable called socket. Um, and that's how you make the distinction there. You can also see that this is highlighted blue and this one uh, was just highlighted, uh, I think brown is the color there. So now we've got the constructor all set up there. And now we're going to basically override uh, the default run method. Actually, technically it's not overriding because this is just a, a subclass. Actually, yeah, that should be overriding. So uh, we'll do public void run just like that. So it is an override uh, from this run method there. So uh, that's what that little icon means there, saying it's overrided that. So here uh, is where we're going to be opening up the data input and output streams uh, from a client. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a global variable for the data input stream and for the output stream, uh, very similar to what we've got in the server here. So uh, data input stream, we'll name these d in and d out. Uh, so data output stream d out. And then we're gonna click on these and we're gonna import from java.io and java.io. So now we just need to connect those up. So actually what we can probably do is we can just copy this code that we've got in here. We'll just copy, and then over here, uh, we'll paste. 
And then uh, this will probably say that, oh, okay, well, we need to make that socket. And uh, this, oops, this one socket as well. And now uh, it's going to probably say that we, yep, should surround with a try catch. And uh, we'll move this into that try catch as well. Uh, so like that. So now we've got uh, those created. And what we're also going to do is we're going to have two methods. And so basically this run method will just sit here and it will say, hey, is there data? Is there data? Is there data? And if there is, it's going to call a method that's going to say send uh, string to all of them. And then uh, that's going to basically go through all of the different server connections that are stored in the server and call another method in the server connection saying send blah string to client. So uh, let's start mocking up those uh, methods here. So we're going to do public and then void send string to client. And that's going to obviously take in a string. Uh, and we'll just call it text is what the string will be. And then we're going to have public void send string to all clients. And then that's going to have another parameter for string text. So uh, here we're going to say while uh, we'll have another variable called should run. And we'll probably use that in the future. Uh, but I like to have like a Boolean value that you can quit out of those while loops that while they should be infinite, really, sometimes they don't necessarily need to. And should we need to close something, then we will be able to. So uh, we'll have Boolean should run. And we'll have that just by default assigned to true there, uh, so that this while loop uh, runs normally. And then in here, we're going to have another while loop uh, saying while d in dot available equals zero. Uh, this thread, which is only going to be uh, pertaining to this thread, it's not actually going to affect the accepting thread that we're going to have over here. It's just going to do uh, this thread sleeping. So uh, we'll sleep for uh, one millisecond. And then uh, that's going to want to be wrapped in its own try catch. Uh, we're not going to add it to the surrounding try out here. Uh, we're going to just surround it with its own. And then uh, here, we'll just delete that comment. And then uh, we'll go down here and we'll say string text, uh, text in is assigned d in dot read utf uh, like that and then uh, this will call the send string to all clients and then we'll pass in text in to that and then uh, that'll go right back up to the beginning. And actually, I went a little bit too far outside of those while loops. That should be inside there uh, so that it doesn't uh, suddenly uh, pop out here. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll say d in dot close, because if it shouldn't run, then obviously it should close stuff down. So uh, d out dot close and socket dot close okay so i think that run method is all set up there and uh what we'll do up here is we'll start to renovate this so we'll get rid of these uh socket data input stream and data output stream and i know that's going to throw up a lot of errors but we'll obviously fix that later uh we'll have an array list of server with a type of server connection. So it will only hold those. And then uh, we'll just call it connections. It is assigned a new array list, uh, server connection, and then uh, just parentheses there. So that's all created there. 
and then uh, we should definitely import it uh, from the java.util and then uh, we'll get rid of these ex except and then pulling in the input and output stream. Uh, we'll wrap this in a while loop. That way it can always continue to run uh, even after it accepts a uh, connection. Uh, do, 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 put that there, put that brace there. And we'll also wrap this in a should run method as well. And we'll make a boolean for that up here. Should run, and then assign that to true. And then uh, here we'll have socket s is assigned ss dot uh, accept. So now we've got that there, and then uh, we'll create a new server so uh, server connection. So uh, server connection uh, sc is assigned a new server connection, and that's going to take that socket that we've called s. And it's also going to take a reference to the server class. So we're going to just call it, uh, we're going to pass that in by saying this, which will pass in an instance of a, you know, this class or this object into the server connection object. And actually, we should probably save that server connection object for now. So uh, we've got the server connection there. And now we also need to add it to our connections array list. So we'll do connections. Uh, dot and then add and then we're going to add sc which is our server connection and then uh, we'll also get rid of this method listen for data so we can get rid of all of that and then uh, we'll save the server so the server is actually pretty simple it's just got that server socket where it's listening for new connections on uh, in this case port 3333 and then when it detects one it'll pull in that socket and then pass that uh, socket into a new server connection along with a reference to uh, itself and then uh, it will also add that server connection to an array list here so uh, what we'll do in here in the send string to all clients is we'll have a for loop and so we'll say while integer index is assigned zero because uh, all arrays start at zero uh, that's kind of how they work uh, index is less than server. Uh, actually, it looks like we don't have a local variable for server. So uh, after socket, we'll have server, uh, server, like that. And then we'll do this dot server is assigned server, which is the name of the value the variable that we passed in there. And then we'll do server dot and then connections and then size. So basically, uh, it's going to go and it's going to say, starting at index zero, iterate through all of the different uh, server connections. And then here, uh, we're going to have a temporary server connection uh, variable. So uh, server connection uh, SC is assigned server dot connections dot get and then we're going to get index well index so uh, actually what I'll do is I'll also drag this over here uh, just so that it's easier to see and then uh, we'll call sc dot send string to client and then we'll obviously send the string called text and that'll go through all of the server connections and it will call this method here so now in that method all we really need to do is d out dot, uh, let's see here, write utf. And then basically it's just going to take in the string. And uh, one important thing to make sure that all of your data goes out is you want to call flush. And actually, we should probably wrap this in a try catch first. There we go. And so we're going to do d out dot flush like that. And that will make sure all of your data is cleared out of that stream, out of all of that buffer space, and it has to go is basically how that works. So um, I don't know what's up with the weird formatting. 
uh, on your... It's probably something to do with me recording. Uh, but anyway, everything should be good there. So I realized I had accidentally stopped recording, uh, so, and I made a couple little changes in here. I'm not completely sure where I left off exactly, so I'm just going to run down uh, the changes I think happened. Uh, so we've moved the server socket outside of this while loop. Uh, we've got the accept, we've got the server connection. We start the thread, uh, because this is a thread object. Uh, it's very important to start it. And we add that to the connections here. Uh, we've got the flush when we're sending a string to the client. And if we go over to our client, uh, let's see here. We've got a flush command in here so that we can make sure that all of our data is getting sent out and something isn't happening sneaky or sneakily behind the scenes uh, where it shouldn't. Um, I think that's about it. And uh, if we just run these real quick, hang on, let me make sure that they're not running anymore. Oh, looks like they are. There we go. Now they're all cleared up. So we're going to click this drop down and we're going to start the server. And if we click on the console here, you can see the server's all started up. By the way, if you want this window to uh, appear as like an actual window and not hide every single time, uh, you can just click that uh, little multi-window button. Uh, it kind of looks like that. Uh, and it will appear down here. So now uh, we'll start up two clients. So that's one client there and then another client here. And if we click this little drop down, you can see that we've got two clients and one server. So if we just sent test, uh, you can see that's echoed right back, and if we go to the other client, oh no, it's not actually displaying anything. Well, that's how we have the client actually set up, where it needs to wait for there to be user input before it will actually go and read from the server. And we'll work on that in the next episode. So if we just type in, I don't know, like G instead, you can see test was echoed back. But if we pop over to the other client uh, and we like, just pressed return, you can see G comes in there. Um, we'll obviously be fixing this uh, relatively soon, uh, but I just wanted to let you guys know that, you know, we've got it at least somewhat working. We've got a server that will handle two different connections, or actually technically infinite, depending on how much RAM you have in your computer, and it will be able to uh, send them out to all the clients. It's just a matter of the clients have to be able to uh, read those. So, uh, I hope this was useful for you guys, and if you want to be notified the instant the next episode comes out, make sure to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!